Christianity and the Art of RV Maintenance continues now at 861-TALK. I thought I'd throw it in there, folks, just a little lightness. We'll go to the phones, because there's people who are patiently <laughs> chewing the phone. <laughs> Let me on. <laughs> I can't wait to get her. Let me go. <laughs> Conifer, Colorado, you're on the air on KOA with Joey Reynolds. Who is this? Who are we talking They're to? They're gone. The Holy Somebody Ghost. Somebody gone. I couldn't wait that long. <laughs> Englewood, you're on the air on KOA. Who is this? Maybe I've disconnected everything here. I Sounds hope I'm not like doing it. it. Let's try another one. Well, Denver? you see what it is. Hello. is a direct line to God. Hello. Nobody's Hello. there. Who is this? Oh, good. My name is Alex, and I'm from Denver. Hi, Alex. And I've been waiting for 25 minutes, and I wish there was more phone conversation. Um, well, that's too bad. I know. Um, <laughs> first of all, I'd like to say I'm a social worker. <laughs> and if I conducted any conferences with the clarity that Ms. O'Hara has conducted herself, it would not be very professional. Um, to begin with, I think it's very unfair of her to lash out at the minister because he's Methodist. He represents an association. She's, uh, that's a very cheap trick to um, go below the belt and not represent um, for what he is there for. <laughs> Believe me, I never go below the belt. Please don't interrupt me. Could I cool. please have that professional courtesy? Um, <laughs> I feel that um, your tactics are very below the belt. If you're going to discuss a matter, such as religion or anything else, you should give each person the, the time allotted. If you ever took debate in high school, you would have learned that, or even junior high. Um, <laughs> so I feel that uh, the questions I have now, if I could have the time, I don't want to be interrupted on that. Um, Nazism, oh, uh, communism, um, I don't know whether they were atheist or not, but they certainly did not represent the Christian banner. Um, you seem to be lashing out and everything is Christian. You're judging a person just because they're Christian, not even knowing the person, not even knowing what they represent. And to another side of it, too, most ministers have their psychological clinical degree. They have many different degrees just besides their religious degree. So I think it's very poor if you just judge them on that fact. The thing is, there, is it not true that many atheists have a lot of things in this world that have caused a lot of heartache? You're saying the, the religious Christian um, from the beginning caused a lot of bloodshed. Is there not a lot of bloodshed that was caused by people that were atheists, not because they were atheists that caused it, but because uh, during that time that they were atheists? Do you deny that? Well, I can't imagine what uh, reference you have. Uh, uh, for instance, thinking over the history of the United States and those persons who were atheists, uh, the, they were, by and large, persons who were concerned with ameliorating the human condition. Uh, and uh, these were, uh, and I've mentioned them before, Susan B. Anthony or Elizabeth Cady Stanton or Florence Nightingale or uh, Thomas Alva Edison no, or uh, just down the line, these people who feel that it's necessary to hmm. improve the quality of life. Well, what was your question? My question is, is it, is, is it not true? I'm, well, that's great with quality of life, and you're mentioning five or six great things. What was your wonderful. question? The question is, is it not true that atheists, uh, these forms of government, that just because somebody's not Christian, does that mean that because they're atheists that there was not bloodshed? What's I mean, oh, well, I, I can give you an answer. Christianity has the all-time record for more persons killed, mutilated, mutilated tortured, put in prison, than evidence. any, than any yes. other philosophy of it's life perfect. in the whole total history of the world, which is uh, approximately 10,000 years. What about Christianity nations? Christianity holds what the whole nations? nations. Hold right. I don't know about <laughs> it. I don't break. know about Take a break. Nations. Thank you, Alan. Call us again. It's 861-TALK. Madeline Murray O'Hare, very fine Irish lady, and from the <laughs> Council of Churches. <laughs> Steve, is, Steve will take calls, too, at 861-TA. Okay, we got to run. We'll be right back, though. Promise you. Oh, I almost got caught. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Stephen Sidarek from the Council of Churches and I are going to... We're going to boogie tonight. <laughs> we have a little punk band coming in here in a little while, local. Actually, they're from St. Louis. They're going to be entertaining us for a little. We always have a little entertainment to break this up. Madeline Murray O'Hare, who's going to sing a couple of her newest songs. <laughs> she, she's a convert, you know. She converted her family room. 
<laughs> in our Let garage. Let me tell you about our, our punk <laughs> to rock To keep our black sheep sun in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have a punk rock group in uh, Salt Lake City. I couldn't believe it. We were up there for our convention last year, and they said, come on down and see the, uh, this uh, group because it's called The Atheists, and it's an atheist punk rock group. So we went down to hear them. I had never heard punk rock in my life and went down to the little nightclub, and their theme song is, There Is No God, There's Only Noise. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, it was noisy. <laughs> Well, we're going to sell you in half, yeah. all right? All right. Yeah. No, it's a, it's no. a little trick we do here on the show. We're restoring. <laughs> all right, let me, let me just make this one special announcement. The Holy Ghost Catholic Church at 19th and California Street will be open all night long. Uh, the lights will be on. You're welcome if you need a place to spend the night because it is exceptionally cold here. We are having a cold wave if you're listening out of state. And they will, of course, have coffee and sandwiches. And uh, we're going to take a report from there in a little while, too, because we've got Haney. He's on the streets. He's oh, our man great. on the streets, Channel 4, New Center 4. So uh, we go all over the place with this show, uh, <laughs> mentally too, till <laughs> 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> now, you know, I, I got to say this, and it's all just part of the interview. You had a very difficult time in Baltimore. Extremely difficult. And We've had an extremely difficult time every place, and uh, I was just telling you during the commercial here that uh, recently the American Atheist Center has been under such attack by the good Christians uh, that Don't uh, the Jews I, bother you either? Oh no, Just only the Jews, Christians? Uh, the Jews are kind of funny because uh, they believe that the synagogue is the synagogue and business is business. And instead of involving themselves in businesses under the name of their church, which all of the other ones do, including the Methodists, uh, the, the Jews keep it separate. Uh, so they don't come in and attack us, but the Christians attack us. Well, you thought I was Jewish because of my maybe, notes. Maybe, maybe. No, I just thought you were Jewish because you were dark and you come from originally New Jersey or something, and everybody in New Jersey is Jewish, <laughs> or so it seems at times when you get up there. Stephen, Stephen. With, all, with all the written material she's obviously got it, or her hands on, maybe you brought your own stock portfolio and you like to expose it to the public in Denver here? Uh, no, I don't. We don't have stock portfolios. Uh, but what we do try to do is uh, we have now an American Atheist Trust Fund, and we ask people to contribute to the American Atheist Trust Fund. All right, let's take a it's quick a call sustaining from, trust fund. from Casper, Wyoming here. Mm -hmm. All right, you're on the air on KOA. Casper? I'm calling from Casper, Wyoming. Is this the ghost? Hello? Casper the ghost. That's <laughs> the ghost. <laughs> I bet you you're tired of hearing that. We can't See, hear you now. We just psyched them out. Hello, I'm calling from Castro, Wyoming, and I have a question for Ms. O'Hare. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'd like to serious. know how can you be so sure that there is no God and that there is no life after death or anything after death? All you have to do is show me. If any of you will die right now and be buried and three days later rise, I'll believe. Believe me. I'll believe. But until that time, uh, the, um, uh, all of the indications are that there are absolutely nothing, that but we Madeline, come from nothing and we go to nothing. When all the facts are in, the truth will still be out. Well, I'm not interested in what you conceive to be the truth because you're a confused young man. Uh, and you're a wise old woman. <laughs> Caller? Hello? Hello there? Yeah, I'm here. What's your first name? Larry. Okay, Larry. Is there anything else you wanted to ask? Incidentally, well, let, me, let me answer a little bit more seriously because the religious community, particularly the Christians, and they're only 1,600 years old because Christianity came in in the year 325. It didn't exist before then. Uh, and if from 325 till now is 1,600 years. And in all of that time, they should have been able to prove that they had a God. And they have uh, eight classic arguments for their God. And uh, these are uh, logistical arguments. And all they would ever have to do to any atheist is sustain the argument. They have uh, classic titles for them, the epistemological argument, the ontological argument, etc. And these are just uh, arguments that they put up for God. If they had a God, all he would have to do is zap down and show himself. Come on, get on camera, God. Hey, Larry, I'll leave. Yeah? what was it you wanted to ask now? I want to ask why she's so sure that there is not a God or that there's nothing after life. She has not. She has not died yet, so she doesn't know what's after life. So how can she be sure that there's nothing after life? No proof. Absolutely no proof. Just as I am certain that I never existed before I was born, uh, before I was in utero, I am that certain that I will not exist afterwards. Boy, the comeback is going to be terrific if there is one. She's going to have a great Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take another pause here. we got Rick Barber standing by with the news. Rick, has anything changed? Since, oh, I know nothing's changed with the weather because I could feel that. I'm going to make a change in a little while. I'm going to put my thermal underwear on. It's 2.30 on KOA Radio and KOA TV in Denver. I'm Joey Reynolds. Our phone number is 861-TALK. We're here all night live, just as we say. The words speak for themselves. We're live all night till 5 in the morning. And then we have a show from the Cable News Network, which is kind of terrific. It's an entertainment show. And following that on Channel 4, News Center 4, 6 a.m. edition. 
Of course, radio takes a sharp left, and they go into news talk. Anyhow, Rick Barber, is there anything that has changed besides the weather? Not a thing except chubby checkers in the hot time and get up in the morning and do the things that, uh, that have to be done when the sun is out. You know, I do things in the light. I don't like the darkness. Uh-huh. But uh, I'll do it. Be careful your image you're here tonight. This is right. I'm <laughs> well, you know, Madeline said something interesting uh, to me. At least she said that her husband, when he died, he didn't pass away. No, he didn't pass away. He, he didn't go over, didn't. pass over. He died. When, after he died, you said that the next day, the sun came up, mm -hmm. and it started all over again. That's right. There was no... Uh... Uh, I think that it's important for people to realize that uh, no matter how much they are involved with another human being, uh, in the ultimate analysis, the world ends with them. When they die, their world ends, or the world ends. Uh, and it's important for them to also to remain uh, steady in their emotions and to be able to handle any crisis situations. And I find that atheists do this fairly well. Are you responsible for removing prayer from school? Oh, yes, sure. indeed I am. I'll get a Nobel Prize for that one day, or a Congressional Medal of Honor, mm -hmm. because there was a great deal of contention around uh, Bible reading and prayer recitations in the public schools at that time. So then, as we just heard in the news about President Reagan having a prayer breakfast tomorrow morning, that does not warm the cockles of your heart, does no, it? No, it doesn't. You see, because, for instance, President Madison refused to have a, a day of prayer for Thanksgiving, uh, etc. And I feel that what, it, what the President of the United States should do is to call upon the religious leaders. He should go to the Protestants and the Jews uh, and say, why don't the religious leaders of the Protestants, the Jews, and the Roman Catholics call for a day of prayer? But the President shouldn't call for it. He should not be having a prayer breakfast tomorrow for Dozier under the aegis of uh, the American government. He should call on the religious community to pray, to issue a call for prayer. If they issued a call for prayer, although it's idiotic, it still would be in conformity with church-state separation uh, to have the religious people talk about religious things or call religious breakfasts, but not the, guy, uh, not the President of the United States. We've got a call coming in. He should not be involved in that. Co a call coming in from Los Angeles here. You're on the radio, KOA. I'm Joey Reynolds. Who is this? Hello. And you're on television, too. What's your name? Hello. 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 Can you hear me? No, I can't hear you now. For some reason or other, when you punch the button, I, all I can, can you hear me at all? I can hear you. I'll have to listen to you on the radio. All right. Uh, this is the Happy Cowboy in Los Angeles. And uh, I'm, uh, well, I, you're, you're on delay, but I'll have to talk anyway. Can you, um, my religion is based on astrophysics. I'm a Christian. But I believe that an honest doubt is one of the greatest faith of all. In my opinion, Mary Madeline O'Hare has a lot more faith than a lot of these phony Christian churches that are just uh, social organizations or socialized religion, as I call it. Uh, she has a lot more faith with her honest doubts about religion than all of the, a lot of these other churches put together. Uh, in my religion, I can uh, uh, prove uh, the existence of God. I've been able to prove the existence of God to myself. Now, I'm not going to uh, prove it to Mary Madeline O'Hare. I'm going to tell her to get her own knowledge and study her, uh, these type of books and find out these things for herself. But I've been able to prove the existence of God in my life, and I've been able to travel in time and space and even go back to the time when Jesus was here on Earth and see his nail-scarred hands. Now, I'm not asking anybody to believe that. Now, uh, I don't. Don't worry. So uh, it's not a make-believe thing. It's a thing you can prove if you have the knowledge and understanding to do it. But okay, you see, like, thank you. Also, like your, um, your, uh, the name... He's, he's you waiting for your answer. That's why I cut him. I know, but, but your, the, when you first introduced yourself, you said the happy cowboy, which sets you apart immediately from other people. And uh, in order, since you have these fantasies, you're able to, to, you, you are able to set yourself apart from other people. It's pretty much like those persons who believe in glossolalia or who practice glossolalia. Uh, this is instant success or instant fame without putting anything into it. A civil engineer will have to work for 20 years to make his name and his reputation, uh, but someone can immediately have a vision of the Virgin Mary and overnight with a third grade education and absolutely nothing going for them uh, can uh, become famous or powerful or rich or etc. And I think all of these are just cheap roads to fame or cheap roads to uh, 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 being set aside as being different and particular because you're just too damn lazy to go the regular route of working hard, getting the knowledge, having the understanding, etc. Even there, I would, I, I would give some credit to Steve here because at least he went to school in order to get indoctrinated. Whereas you could say, well, I went through space and time. Yeah. 
uh, I went through space and time and I saw ooh, the ooh. nails in the hands of Jesus. And it doesn't mean a thing. It just is fantasy, Bill. Reverend Stephen Sidark from the Council of Churches of Colorado, ladies and gentlemen. Joey, I think there's a difference in the gentleman's call between, uh, the, the, you know, he, he talked about her honest doubt vis-a-vis -vis religion. And I think he's just misguided there. She doesn't have honest doubt. She has repudiation in her mouth. Uh, and, and anathema for all things religious. But that's coupled with a curious uh, inconsistency in her, in her own demeanor towards others who are of a religious persuasion. Namely, that there's a gross intolerance on her part as well, as she's claiming there is on the Christian part of the atheist. Let me ask you something. Do you feel that we should tolerate those persons who advocate war? No, I don't. All right, I can't tolerate anybody who advocates an anti-human position. And religion is anti-human. Let's take a I call here. Absolutely, right, absolutely definition. totally call definition. Here. All right, Denver, you're on KOA with Joey Reynolds, Madeline, and Steve. Hello? Yes. I have a question for Miss O'Hare. Um, did you come from a Christian background? Yes. Presbyterian, Irish Presbyterian. That sort of throws you, doesn't it? Is that the end of it? I didn't hear her. I, I guess the callers can't hear us. Irish... Did I disconnect you? Irish Presbyterian. Okay? My father and mother belonged to the Presbyterian Church, and I came from an Irish Presbyterian background. I went classically to Sunday school, to church, uh, to something on Wednesdays, and had a very, very fine education in religion. Where did you go wrong? Where did I go right? It was when I read the Bible uh, from cover to cover one weekend. and How found could you my do that? One How weekend? anybody read the Bible in oh, a weekend? Oh, Serious so scholarship. <laughs> my goodness. Oh, does this mean, of course, that I never went back and looked at it? No, I can't, it, I can't, if you I can't up, conceive of oh, anybody having on, that kind of anybody, weekend. Anybody can even read Ulysses in it's one like weekend. It's like Esalen, a weekend changed oh. my life, you know. Did you read the Old oh. and the New Testament in a weekend? Of course. <laughs> Uh, reading, I'm reading. gonna light candles in front of you now. Well, it's very, very easy. <laughs> Anybody who's a reader can pick up the Bible and read it from cover to cover, and they can get an immediate oversight and impact. And then, of course, you go back and you, you finish your scholarship with it. I uh, took courses in um, Old Testament, New Testament, uh, your comparative religion. Uh, I do not relate to that at all. Why? Uh, when someone says, I studied under, that doesn't mean a thing to me. The, the important thing is the amount of information you get not the viewpoint of the person who was educating you. Oh, the significance so you of a great teacher is never to be denied. Uh, well, I don't know of any great religious teachers from Yale. <laughs> Let's take another call. Uh, Here we go. We're on again. KOA, you're on Englewood. Who is this? Hello. Yes, I'm uh, uh, interested in... Uh, what's, your first, what's your first name? Stan. Hi, Stan. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. I've been waiting about two hours, but oh, it's goodness. worth it. I'd like to confront Mrs. O'Hare on some very... Uh, logical questions to prove that uncategorically that uh, atheism is absolute ignorance and should not be bought off in a way uh, in evidence of the facts that it is uh, tolerable as something um, what you would call I intelligent. First of all, <laughs> I'd like to tell you why I say this. Well, please it's go very easy to, to explain this if you give me a chance. Now, I have a friend of mine who I love dearly, okay, and the love of the Lord, all right? Now, he's an atheist. And uh, one day he said, I can't see how you believe in God. And I said, well, I can't see how you don't believe in God. I said, well, what about life after death? And he says, well, I don't believe in life after death because I think a human being is like a light bulb. When you die, you go out, and that's it. I said, well, I say that that's a pessimistic viewpoint. Because I believe and trust in the promises of Jesus Christ. He who believes in me has eternal life. Okay? Now, I said, if I'm wrong, hypothetically, which I'm not, and Madame O'Hare is going to find out someday, she herself is going to be resurrected. <laughs> Subtle threat. Uh, I've ever heard what I'm saying is, uh, uh, I, I said, if, if I'm wrong, I lose nothing. If I'm right, with my belief, I have everything to gain, and my position is totally optimistic, and I have everything to believe for and live for, and uh, my friend who's an atheist has everything to lose and nothing to gain. Because now, you see, what has happened is that you have lost your entire life preparing for death, whereas your atheist friend has been living his life richly. 
Since I became a Christian, my life has become 100% better. And I want to refute your sure. statement earlier that you said a uh, person, when he gets into a religion, which Christianity is true form, is not. Jesus Christ ended it on the cross. He said, it is finished. Religion was finished. A uh, true Christian is in a relationship with the true and living Son of God and the Father and the Holy Spirit, which I've also seen manifestations of and I have in my own uh, life. Okay, thank you very much for calling. I, okay. We're taking a break. That's why I'm cutting you here. Steve has a comment to make, too. Can you hold it? I'd just like to say real quickly that, uh, Stan, you need to know that uh, Ms. O'Hare will not deal on a personal level of depth concerning Christianity. And we'll be right back. It's 861-TALK, 861-TALK, and we're <laughs> sorry for the long hold. It's just no that we're very popular tonight. This is All Night Live, ladies and gentlemen. Like similar ideas found in progressive cities, but unique to Denver, the nonprofit Woman Wise Healthcare at 1829 High Street provides healthcare in an atmosphere conducive to patient education and patient choice. With women providing the healthcare for other women, there is not only mutual respect and understanding, but also an active voice in support of women helping themselves. Appointments can be made by calling 320-1020. Government said, get involved, and Seattle got involved by forming a private industry council. They developed a training program for the building trades that's paying off for everyone. The training site is Seattle's old Morrison Hotel. Its renovation will mean low-rent housing for 248 residents and union apprenticeship opportunities for over 40 carpenters and painters. Private industry councils are working. a private industry council in your area. Get involved. It's working, this is my brother, Adam. He may look okay to you, but my mommy says he needs insulin shots every day just to keep him alive. He has children's diabetes. It's a really bad disease. He cries when he gets a shot. Sometimes my mom cries too. There we go. Madeline Murray O'Hare. Hi. Did you ever have a moment when you really felt that you should not be an atheist? Since I've become, become an atheist? No. Since I was about 9, 10, 11 years old. No regrets? Absolutely no regrets along the line. Have you ever met anybody who's almost convinced you that... Oh, no. No, no. Not at all. As a matter of fact, atheism, like pregnancy, is irreversible. Uh, if you're pregnant, you're pregnant. If you're an atheist, you're atheist. You can't back up. Once you have abandoned all of that, it's just like uh, male chauvinism. Once a woman gets a full view of uh, women's liberation, she can't turn back and embrace um, male chauvinism again. It's an absolute one-way street. It's an absolute one-way street to lead from war, for instance, into peace. You can't back up and say, well, maybe we should have war sometimes, or limited war. Uh, if you see that, if you can perceive that war is detrimental to the human community, that's it. And you go on from there. Do you ever feel diabolical? <laughs> Never at all. No? Do you no. feel that, uh, do people accuse you of that? I am quite frequently accused of being possessed by the devil, or being Satan's agent, uh, or being a witch, uh, or, uh, having uh, long uh, tentacles into the so-called underworld or being a manifestation of evil. Yes, uh, <laughs> this goes on all the time because uh, the religious community has some pretty bizarre ideas. Well, you attribute most of the negative side to your program to the religious community then. Well, let me tell you, what we do with our, we have 48 chapters in 26 states and we're uh, into uh, all of the positive aspects of atheism, which are many. And the only time that we get into a negative discussion is when I'm asked to appear 
um, on a television show with a minister or something, uh, and or a minister wants to debate me, and I just charge a flat rate of ten thousand dollars, and I'll debate anybody who'll pay the rate. Hey, I got a break tonight. Uh, yeah, Steve, you got a break. Uh, I don't price. have to pay ten thousand. Let's take another call here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Longmont. You're on KOA Radio. I'm with mm. Joy. Uh, I'm Joey Reynolds. You're with me. Hello. <laughs> Good morning. You hear us? Hello. Hello. Who is this? Uh, this is Louie from Longmont. Can you hear us, Louie? Uh, no, I can't, but I'll listen on the TV. Yeah, I don't think people on the telephones can hear us. Yeah, I can hear you now. Good. Welcome to the show, Louie. Hi. Um, I just had a question for Madeline right away and then a couple comments. Um, you said that you read the Bible all the way through, right? When you made your decision on uh, not become, becoming an atheist? Yes. Well, um, what did you see so wrong in it yourself that you turned so much against God and not believing him so totally, you know? Well, if you've got six or eight hours, I'll be glad to tell you. I think that the uh, analysis of the Old Testament and the analysis of the New Testament uh, has been made by uh, uh, just an extraordinary number of scholars now. Uh, and the um, fallacies, the um, uh, make-believe in it, the inaccuracies, the sadomasochism, uh, the brutalities, the ugliness, uh, this is all absolutely evident. And you can pick it up and go from the first uh, to the last. For instance, do you really believe, uh, let me give you one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. Do you really believe that God hated everything that he created and therefore drowned every living thing, even your puppy dog, uh, and only kept alive an old drunk and eight of his relatives? Is that a loving God? She's speaking of Noah. That's the Old Testament. Okay, let's turn to the New Testament. Do you think that Jesus Christ is love-filled when he says, I come not to bring peace but the sword. I come to turn mother against, uh, father against son and brother against brother. Yea, even unless ye hate your own self, you cannot come unto me. I would never ask anybody to hate their own selves in order to come unto me. And also, I am a mother, but I would not ask any of my children to die on a cross to save mankind. I don't even want them to die in El Salvador. I don't want your son to die in El Salvador. I don't want, want my son to die in El Salvador. Nobody needs to die any place. Okay, All of those things are very, very bad. Can I get a couple comments in here real quick? Go ahead. First, I'd like to um, congratulate the Reverend there. He's been pretty cool all through this and everything. And, and uh, I'm just, I'm proud of that because that shows a good faith right there that he doesn't lose his cool and somebody's cutting him down like this. And for my last comment, I'd like to say, <laughs> <laughs> every Sunday in church, you know, while we're sitting in church celebrating and learning the Word of God, what do you atheists do? Do you sit over there and think of stuff to put down the church and to put down the Reverend? You know, that kind of bothers me a little bit. How old are you? Probably we're out cutting the grass. Wait a minute, how old are you? 19. 19 years old. Okay, thanks for calling. Thanks, Louie. Bye-bye. Take another call. Denver, you're on the radio on KOA with Joey Reynolds. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I'd like to ask... Uh, uh, Miss O'Hare, uh, you know, what year is it? Oh, no, not that old point. Oh, do you okay. want the Chinese oh, mind, year? Wait, let me oh, ask you, mind. do you want the Chinese year? Do you want the Hebrew year? Do you want the Christian era year? Do you want the year that they use with the Muslims? Or what? No, no, you expect me to answer no. Anno Domino no, and no, say, no, therefore... No. Hey, you, okay. you know, what I, what I really want to say is, you know, we all impose our values on each other. We all do. You know, and, and you said you read the Bible. Where in the Bible does it say there is no God? What? Well, naturally, the Bible not only says no, that the there Bible, is, there the is Bible, God. well, it's impossible to talk to you, isn't it? Now you know how it feels. No. no. Yes. Yes. Well, well you see, he has nothing God. to say, though, and I have oh, something to say. Oh, I do have something to say. All right. Because it does say there You better is no say it fast, because we're going. Okay, the fool in his heart says there is no God. They are corrupt. Okay. And do you know that Jesus Christ said that he who calls another a fool is in danger of hellfire? And you have just put yourself in danger of hellfire, son. Oh, wait a minute. You know, if you believe the Bible, you have just put yourself in danger of hellfire. I have to cut you off because we're going to take a break, but thank you for calling. It's 861-TALK. Ladies and gentlemen, last night we had politics. Tonight we have religion. Tomorrow night we got nowhere to go but sex. 861-TALK. <laughs> Get on the horn and call us. This is All Night Live, and I'm Joey. Be right back. What's going on in the entertainment industry? Lee Leonard knows. What are your favorite actors and entertainers up to? Lee Leonard knows. Leonard, one of Hollywood's top entertainment reporters, travels coast to coast to bring you the latest news about the hot new movies. 
posh celebrity parties, the premieres, the exciting new shows. Travel with him as he meets with the stars and star makers and the starry-eyed newcomers at work and at play, in the studio and on location. And there were a lot of people who believed that. They did. And then when I was 32, I wrote the paper and said, now I really am a 32-year-old midget. Now, I guess that's important because if the movie's a success, and millions of millions of see it, you got a shot at people liking the song and saying, hey, I think I'd like to... You'll reach for the stars when you tune into Lee Leonard and People Now at 5 a.m. on KOA-TV.